Hello, everyone. We're here at Epic Headquarters. We have me, Stacy, Community Manager. Jim Brown. Uh, Josh Marlowe. Chris Perna. And we are here to show you some official Epic Games concept art, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, official isn't really the right term, but it's a, it's a working... Uh, You're very kinda, official, Chris. Right, we've kind of coined this term, working concept. Uh, this is just me basically kit bashing some things into a level and playing with materials and lighting and, and visual clarity theories and things like that to try and come up with a look um, that can kind of drive direction um, across the project. Awesome. Um, we, you also have a map, and I, I saw this. This is, um, is this Dave Spolinski's map? Yeah, this is Dave's map. Uh, what, what's it called? CEO4 CEO or something? CEO yeah. Test 4 test, or something. Test CEO4. Some it's in the name. test maps folder. <laughs> and uh, I just grabbed that and kind of uh, gave it this industrial vibe. Yeah, so we yeah. were, we, Chris called me over the other day, and he said, hey, I wanted to, you to take a look at something. And I was, I was doing something else, and I went over and I looked, and I just went, I went, wow, this, is, this, is, this looks really awesome. And he said, what do you think? And I said, I think, I think you should go for it. And he printed out a copy of it. So we will have this picture available for you for, to use for your desktop or whatever you want to do, or it's for inspiration for what you're doing in the game. And Chris is actually going to give you the first look, and we are going to take a fly through the map maybe? Sure, yeah. Okay. So let's take a let's take a look at the the picture. I think we have it queued up down on the. Actually, well, we're in the map right now. Oh, okay. So awesome. so yeah. Okay. So I mean, right now I'm in Unreal Edit Four, and uh, we're looking at kind of what we're calling a working concept art. Um, what I did was I kind of took some theories of visual clarity, and um, I started to mesh this out with some of the things that we had laying around in other packages and from other projects and, and stuff. That's why it kind of looks a little bit haphazard. Um, the wall columns, for example, are made up of lots of little pieces and, and things like that. Um, but I think the overall look is clean. It will, um, it will allow characters to pop off the background. This is not the look for the entire game. Um, what I'm hoping to do is the kind of the quality of this. I'm hoping to have um, to pick up through the game, uh, where the lighting plays nice with the materials, and uh, there's some color patches here and there. Um, this, in my mind, represents kind of the sci-fi industrial look. We could go grimier with this, um, but when we talk about visual clarity and things like that, I think this kind of thing hits that mark. We've got some details, so it's not completely stark, uh, you can see some areas that I haven't really gone over yet, some of the BSP stuff. Um, what we're trying to do now is take a look at where we're at, how detailed we need to go, and what actually building purpose-built meshes for some of these columns and some of the doorways and things will bring to the table, right? Um, this kind of defines a certain look. Alien 1, uh, Outland, kind of mining base uh, type of look. Uh, I don't know if the grime is really showing up on, on the stream, but, uh, you know, it is pretty dirty. It's, it's, it's generally chalky and white and kind of dirty and metallic and reflective in some areas and, and, and stuff like that. But I think it's going to bring what we're talking about as far as visual clarity to the table right now. It's white. It doesn't have to be. We can change the colors, and I'm sure we're going to have a multitude of colors. Uh, the way I approached this was I filled in medium frequency detail, big metal plating, uh, tubes and pipes, and some of the larger stuff. On top of that, I started to lay in high frequency detail, uh, little fiddly fuse boxes and, and antennas and pipes and, and things like that. Those things give scale to the environment. Um, and then on top of that, we started to layer in some color and some decals and some lighting. Uh, I think the overall impression is, is pretty cool. And overall, this is, to me, unreal. And, and the entire franchise has always been, uh, I used to use this term a lot, a, a Tim Burton Batman type of caricature oh, of nice. itself, right? Um, and where I'd like to go with a, the new franchise is more of a uh, Chris Nolan kind of Batman Begins. Um, it is Batman Day, in case you didn't know <laughs> I did not know <laughs> that. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, just something a little more polished, a little more realism, uh, 
but without going over the top and, and doing kind of like what we did with, with Gears or uh, UT3 and making everything dark and grimy and grungy. I think you could still have detailed environments that look amazing and add color and have visual clarity and have your cake and eat it too, basically. You know? I think this, is, this to me is a really good example of, of our process that we use internally where we start with a map that is just kind of the basic, the shell, and we, we just focus on the gameplay. And then kind of independent of, of us doing that, um, a lot of times Chris or the art guys will, will do these little vignettes that are just, uh, what would you call them, like little theme rooms, it's, it's right? Viz, uh, it's Viz Dev, right? Yeah, yeah you're doing a, a visual prototype of an area or a map. That's what I was looking for, visual yeah. prototype, right? And it's, it's a, these aren't necessarily even made... Sometimes it, we don't even use, you don't even use the maps that we're doing gameplay stuff in. You're just building how you think it should look and how right. you think it should feel and getting a sense of, of scale and color and all that stuff. And right. Once we nail that stuff down, then we'll, we'll play it and we'll say, wow, these columns are too thick or this wall isn't flat enough or I'm getting hung up on some of these meshes and, and stuff like that. And, well, yeah, I know that you know. some people are looking at it right now and saying, oh, boy, I wonder if I'm going to get caught on this. So we right, haven't even right. play tested this yet, so we don't know. So. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. not what this is about. No, this is total viz dev, right? This isn't, hey, I'm Mr. Map Maker and I need all my <laughs> space and stuff, right? So this actually is a very cramped map, too. So yeah. by building out some of the mesh work, it got even more cramped. And that's not okay. We're not going to be able to do that, right? So this is purely visual. Hey, here's a quality bar. Here's what lighting should do. Uh, there should be lots of ambient occlusion. That the materials and the textures should be light enough to allow for the lighting to hit the darks and the lights that it needs to create volume in the shapes. Um, the color unifies things. Uh, having multiple crazy colors all over the place is, is cool for some effects, um, but not so much for others. And that's not kind of what we were going for with this. Uh, this might be, this could evolve into uh, more of like a Leandri mining colony on an asteroid, right? And the skybox turns into space and there's a giant tractor beam in the middle of the map flying up and into a yeah. cracked asteroid mining ore, right? Uh, magnetically or something down into the facility. A and that gives it a sense of place. This is the first step. This is, hey, uh, you know, what, what is the overall visual identity of, of this visual clarity idea that we have? You know? Well, this is, a, this is a big step because this is what everybody's been really asking is, what, what should I make my map look like? Which, where should I begin? And this is a the really nice... Right, and I, I hope it inspires some people, right? I mean, there, there was a lot of questions about white things and it being trendy and this, that, and the other thing. And, and uh, I, I think this isn't that clean, reflective white that's been flying around. Um, it's, it's got some grime. It's got some wear to it. Uh, for me, it just it feels really good with the lighting, um, and and we'll be playing around with other things too. We're obviously not going to be able to do a castle like this or some of the other tech areas. We we actually have some darker stuff that Rick Kohler's been playing around with. Le Leandry, you know, that looks fantastic as well. Yes. And and uh, the castles. Yeah, and the alley yeah. Stuff. So the answer to a lot of those questions, and, and I've read through some of the ones we're going to ask today, is is UT is an evolving thing, and and it's it's an all encompassing thing. There are many different environments in UT and there's going to be different colors and different environments but what this does is it gives you maybe a quality bar hey all those different things need to have a lighting quality and a, uh, a mood about them that feels like this that gives you the feeling of this yeah. it also gives our, our art team a chance to play around just like our design team does where I mean UE4 is as due to us uh, as everyone else right, right? so we're yeah. playing yeah. with how does light right. reflect off surfaces? You know, how do we add details without overwhelming polygons and ruining gameplay and all this other stuff that um, you know we, we were just talking about post-process stuff and and how it's it's so different from um, what we've done in the past. And sure. just, so this is our chance to, or I should say, your chance to to play around in there and, <laughs> and do some cool art stuff. Yeah, even for me, like I've just been. Uh, spending some time just making some prototype floors and things and then seeing what he's done with them you know making pillars and columns things that you would never imagine your stuff being used it's like hey this shape is inspiring this is awesome you know, I can and you worked on something recently building. too in the engine um we had a demo that was played recently that you had worked on uh the google yes google demo the yes google demo. <laughs> yeah so i worked on the google demo as well as the apple uh, demos also so the, uh, one of the other things about detail levels and stuff, if you notice in some of these hallways, I tried to keep details concentrated around doorways 
and above you, and the floors and the play areas are nice and neat. Um, there's just concentrated areas of detail, like the centerpiece here, and these, these kind of door frames, and detail is very much in the periphery. And it shouldn't, uh, if, if the hallway spaces are, are better than this, um, and meant for mesh work like this, it shouldn't impede gameplay, and it should enhance everything. You should enhance visually and, and gameplay-wise and all that wonderful stuff, so. All right, and we have a bunch of questions. And I actually don't even have all of the questions that were asked down here, so we're not gonna be taking any questions from the stream today, but um, if you go back to the thread, Josh and Chris both are gonna be answering questions that didn't get asked here today. Sure, definitely. And before we go on, I also want to introduce a new member of our team. Some of you may know him. <laughs> Come on over, Pete. Yeah, you're going to have to like. You just come on here. Come over here, share. Yeah, yeah. Yay, Pete's here. You can sit here. We have. <laughs> we have Pete Neffley here. He's a gameplay programmer, right? Yeah, I'm. Uh, Go ahead. Do I need to wear it? The special one. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be doing some of the gameplay programming along with uh, Matt Alpey and uh, Joe Wilcox. I did a lot of the multiplayer on Gears, and I'll be doing some of the uh, multiplayer kind of spectator mode stuff for UT. Um, so I'm super excited. I started on Monday. I can't wait to uh, keep going. Thanks, and we're very happy to have Pete with us. Yes, we are. Personal. <laughs> Okay, so let's get to your questions, and like I said, if I don't get to it on here, please uh, check the forums and I'll get back to them. Uh, Great Emerald asks, what's your opinion on the idea of making weapon models configurable? You want to take that one, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's something that we've talked about a lot, actually, in the past. Uh, we talked about it with UT3, and um, we wanted to do it. Um, uh, we actually talked about doing configurable, Cliff and I used to talk about doing configurable weapons back before it was kind of the cool thing that people were doing where you could unlock upgrades. So say you started with the base rocket launcher that fired nothing but a rocket and then you could later um, upgrade the ability to load multiple rockets and then upgrade and the ability to do grenades and you could kind of custom design your own weapons and use them how you wanted to use them or uh, right. adjust like, oh, I want a bigger shock uh, shock a radius bigger radius on my shot combo, but it does less damage. So you can kind of play with all these sliders and do all this craziness. Um, and I think it's still a cool idea, and it has a lot of merit. Um, that said, uh, visually, I don't know what we want to do in terms of customization. There's there's a lot that's recognizable about about UT's weapons, and right. that's kind of kind of the core of the game. So. We're a little hesitant to miss with that. Yeah, too I mean, much it's going to be a fine line with that stuff. So yeah, it's, we'll, we'll it, it's hard because UT is all about. I see somebody coming with a rocket launcher, and I I know exactly what they're capable of <coughs> with that rocket launcher. And when those variables start to move in, in weird directions where you don't know what you're running into, um, it can be problematic, uh, especially for kind of high end competitive play. Um, the other flip side to that is that, that if you look at you know, kind of the history of UT and you say like like Chaos UT, which just had <laughs> which was so awesome. Like so many weapons that did so many <laughs> crazy things. That, like it doesn't even matter anymore. At that point, it's just about having fun and doing crazy right. stuff. Uh, so yeah, we can go either direction with it, really. I might have done the voices of proxy mines at one time. Oh, really? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Fun, nice. fun times, fun times with flag. Yeah. Uh, another great question that I really like is, will opponents have, uh, that have armor picked up show differently from those without armor? Like when you pick up the shield belt, you glow. If you, if you pick up different... Um, pieces of armor, is there any way that the person who's fighting you can tell that you have armor on? Yeah, I think we're going to have to have visual cues like that, right? I mean, yeah. I mean we, we, yeah. again, it's something that we're still experimenting with and playing with. Um, one of the cool things about the shield belt is that you can see it. Um, you can see it, but you don't know how much energy is left in it, which is kind of cool, because <laughs> right. the guy who has one and the guy who has 100 both look intimidating from a <laughs> distance, uh, so you can't really tell. Uh, that said, armor we could do the same thing with. Um, it would be a pretty big discussion in terms of characters, though, if we were going to show, you know, make one uh, an, an armor vest that could, you know, slot on top of every character, right. or thigh pads, a helmet, whatever all those things were. Um, but we could also do something with, uh, you know, like a, a glowy helmet or glowy whatever. Glowy. Represent <laughs> yeah, right. uh, re represent yeah, right. that. We could bedazzle them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, the, the, the approach we have right now is kind of the same we've done in the past, where 
if you hit someone with armor, uh, we'll, we don't really tell you, uh, other than you get the, you know, kind of the hit effects. What we've talked about doing is, instead of getting blood, you get spark effects until their armor is gone, and then you start getting blood or something along those lines. But. Okay, and Great Emerald's last question is about uh, Shadow Mac quality. Um, he would like to see that the JPEG artifact lights uh, get avoided. Uh, is that something that you, they can do if, if you're on a lower end machine? I just think it's going to be something we're going to have to play around with internal. Mm -hmm. I don't really, okay, I don't Mac really know a solution for that right now. So, Mac D11 wants to know. He doesn't want to sound like he's being critical. <laughs> but um, could we could we lead the art style in a way that is not the other extreme compared to UT3? So basically, this is what we were just talking about. He doesn't want it to be real white and glowy, and right. as opposed to, to real dark. So. Right, and I, I think uh, one of the things that we didn't do with this map that, that I just showed was start to layer in uh, decals that, uh, some of the overlay decals like grunge and, sh and streaks and bird poop and, and you know, stuff like that. <laughs> just, just some of the stuff that makes it, makes it realistic and, and, and a gives it a real sense of place and, and uh, anchors, anchors the visuals. So that stuff's coming. We're going to start playing around with how grungy we should be. Uh, my guess is that it w it, it'll never be UT3 grunge, um, but it'll be a little grungier than what we've, what we've seen, just, just to add a little bit more of that, that, that punch. Yeah. Yeah. Realism, yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. So it's yeah. not so sterile. I think some people might be <coughs> reacting to seeing uh, maps in early development, so you see the very stark, plain, yeah. just kind of the BSP shells that we yep. that we, we have so far, um, like the the deck that's out there that's uh, has some material supplied, but there's there's basically no geometry in it yet, and that's that's just because we're in early development. That's not the right. art direction that we're we're going for there. Right. So don't confuse the two. With regards to environment, now that we have such a powerful uh, engine and lighting effects, do we expect problems to be able to see the players at all? No, I don't think so at all. I think we're going to have to just experiment with that stuff. Um, in the past, we had problems seeing the players because the players were as detailed as the environments and they were lit in the right. same way and stuff. Um, now, we will still have detailed characters and detailed environments to an extent, but we have lots more tricks um, with lighting and post-process um, and things like that to allow those characters. And, and we're very much aware of a visual clarity <clears throat> and a clarity of experience for the player. So we will be very much uh, concentrating on that stuff and, and uh, you know, working to make sure those characters are really, they really pop, mm -hmm. since that's most of the experience in the game. You know? yeah. Steve and I have talked a lot about there's such a call right now for bright skins from a lot of the, the really competitive community. And there's this almost kind of knee-jerk reaction in the other direction from the non-competitive players right. who don't want to be running around with uh, glowy gummy bears. They actually want to see the characters. So and some people want to hide in the dark spots and yeah, stuff like that. Actually, you know, use so. the shadows in a way yeah. that they're intended to be used. Um, so what we're hoping for is that we can find a good balance where characters are visible, um, whether they have a separate post-process chain, like uh, Josh and I were talking about earlier, or you know, rim shaders or different lighting rigs or are, there's all these different things that we can right. do there um, so that we don't have just pure straight glowing characters that we have something that still looks good and feels right in the environment but still maintains that level of visual quality so it's a big challenge but i think we'll get there okay um that was by quillian by i think i forgot to say that uh <laughs> i always screw this one up <laughs> demon terge Dementiers. Dementiers. I, I, I thought you said something else. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to give up on these. Um, can animations, particularly advanced movement animations like spinning, rolling, dodging, diving? Um, I'm not sure if he's asking as the player or if you're looking at another player, but can um, they be made distinct and apparent? So, like, if, if somebody's dodging, can you tell that they're dodging? Or I, I was uh, messing around on a map with, with Joe the other day, and he was dodging out of the way, and mm -hmm. from his opinion, <coughs> he just did a little dodge, but from mine, I could really tell that he moved. Right, right. You know, right. so as far as dodging goes, yes, but I'm, I'm It's not just something we're going to have to play around with, right? Animation is one of the things I'd love to evolve um, with this, this game type, uh, this, this type of gameplay, and, and it's hard because you're, you're 
again, in a constant struggle of what looks good versus what's responsive, right? Mm -hmm. um, you need to turn on a dime. You need to, right. you know, 360 and 180 and, and double jump and twin, you know, dodge jump and all that stuff. And that's not what a normal human does. And, and so, sure, and especially in, in that time frame, right? Flip. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. in that time frame. So um, it's, it's been a constant thing, how to make that stuff look good and, and look natural but still give the responsiveness yeah. uh, without breaking the game. And yeah. uh, I, I think that's, well, that's always been one of the strengths of Epic because I think we have a just remarkably incredible animation yeah. team. Um, and the stuff that those guys can pull off just completely blows my mind. And I have no doubt that we'll get there with this game as well. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mechatash, um, we've talked about this before, but the, I knew the question was going to come up again. Um, which architectural themes can we expect to see in the new UT? For instance, the Necris, um, which was kind of Middle Eastern, um, the, uh, Asian with the Ronin, the Egyptian. Well, I think we, we've already identified a couple buckets, and, and Dave Spolinski put up a list. Um, we've got, you know, there's a sci-fi bucket, there's a, uh, an industrial bucket, and there's a Nali kind of ruin bucket, and combinations of those. That's where we're going to start. Um, are there room, is there room for all this stuff? Absolutely. Uh, UT is kind of an all-encompassing universe, so um, I think if someone wants to make an Egyptian map, it will get made. I can't believe right? you said it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's a lot of that stuff's going to be up to you guys, right? I mean, it's uh, what do you want? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's do something fun, and and if you make it, and it's fun, and then it's going to be awesome. I yeah. think Dave put that graphic up in the uh, forums as well. It is, yeah, yeah. It shows all the different buckets and then the ways that they combine and yes. do all this crazy stuff. But again, that's just one subset of things. Right, possible. right. That's kind of where we wanted to start. We wanted to really define what are the buckets of the, uh, that make UT, UT, mm -hmm. and then move on from there. And then UT is defined by different buckets for different people. But um, for us, the core of UT was pretty much those buckets. Yeah. Okay. And Sly, who is the newest recipient <coughs> of our UT prototyper Yay. banner. Congratulations, Sly. Um, for me, he, oh, he has a lot of questions. <laughs> for, for me, design and visual clarity are immediately linked to each other. So uh, should some questions not fit in the stream topic, feel free to ignore them. OK, I will do that probably <laughs> <not>. <laughs> Okay, so the first question we've already answered. Are you, are you leaning towards lots of white and clean? We're going to be all over the place. Yep. And for sci-fi, which is currently super hip. Well, we're always super hip, but, yep. but we're not going to just go that one way. Uh, did you guys look at original maps in unlit and lit mode to see the differences that was done with the lighting and textures? Yeah, I mean, I posted that stuff to the yep. forums, right? And, and uh, there's some specific forums in, is, is it the, the environment art forums or? Yeah. I think it's in the environment art forums where I, where I took all three games and I posted lit and unlit versions, with screenshots comparing, um, you know, density of detail and mesh work and, and texture and shader work and lighting and stuff like that. Um, and it was really good to see all three games side by side. It was, it was like all three had deck and I chose levels that were in all three games too. So uh, deck was one of them and I had a, a shot from 99 deck, 2004 deck or whatever and, and uh, uh, UT3 deck and, and you could see the stark contrast between UT3 and how far we swung yeah. into the dark and dreary and, and right. mucky stuff, you know, um, which at the time Fine. was felt, felt like it was okay, uh, you know, but uh, a lot of that was lighting, a lot of it was post process, right, right, right. material. Texture, a lot of it was the texture work, too. There's yeah. a lot of different aspects there. So. And, and we were learning, lighting. again, we were learning the tech, right? And so it was new. We were doing gears, and now oh, yeah, I was winning all kinds of awards for visual quality and stuff. And, and so we, oh, wow, naturally we'll take it and we'll do, we'll do yeah, this, yeah. you know? And, and it wasn't a good fit um, in hindsight. But everybody knows everything <laughs> in hindsight. So, yeah. And, and the lighting now is amazing. You can make a map right. look completely different just with lighting now. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, what do you consider more important, the original themes or modern themes? So you more of a Nally guy or you more something like th this now? I like them all. I think they can all be fantastic, right? I am a... I am a uh, I am a dark, hardcore guy, and I like the dungeons and, and stuff like that, but I find beauty in, in for example, the level I showed, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I just, I like it all. A good art is good art, right? I mean, it's, it's yeah. all good. 
I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure about this one, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So, does anybody know wh why two, uh, UT 2004 was a little bit more brightly colored in comic than, than other games in the, in the past? That one just went with a, it went with a very different theme, a uh, different feel. <coughs> it was kind of a, a, a divergent storyline uh, right. that went in a weird direction. It, it was um, and very much kind of sports themed and then they kind of went almost over the top into a like WWE wrestling. Uh, it, I don't know, it was, so UT 2003 was actually meant to be Unreal Championship. It was meant to be a completely different product mm -hmm. on a completely different platform for a different audience really. Um, and at the very last minute, um, DE went and finished that while Epic kind of took over UT 2003 and, and kind of got that out the door as a as a PC product. Um, and then knowing that that wasn't quite the right way to go, we immediately followed that up with UT 2004, which is kind of more what our vision was for UT at the time. Um, but that said, it was also built on top of UT 2003, so it had a lot of the same characters and look and feel and, mm -hmm. and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. But yeah, it was definitely a little bit more whimsical, a little bit more cartoony and definitely over the top as opposed to the gritty hardcore that the original... And we were a different was. studio back then, I think. Yeah. There, there, was, yeah, yeah. there was no art direction on those products. Yeah. It was, hey, let's get together and have a meeting and, and everybody go back and do some cool stuff. And, and we worked in conjunction with the community and, and um, it... it uh, it worked miraculously, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how that worked, but it was... Yeah, and we worked yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, we're kind of going back to that now, too. I mean, yeah. uh, it's, it's, art direction is very loose, and, and we're relying on the community, and we're kind of just doing some cool stuff, and, and it's got a really good vibe, I, th I think, the project. We need to get more contributions from the environment art guys. Some yes. modelers. Yeah, Josh. For sure. Well, Sly, <laughs> Sly does have a lot more questions, so... And he had so many, he actually made his own thread, yeah. so one of you guys will go back and or both, we'll go back and, and uh, talk to Sly and his thread about his questions. So we're gonna go jump down to Asula. And in regards to character model visual clarity, in UT3 the, char the characters had colored lights, the LED lights on mm -hmm. them. Um, they, he thought that was a great solution to the bright skins and had a futuristic sporty feel. Is there any chance I can return? And he posted a screenshot of like Tron with the dark skins with the Yeah, LEDs. I know what he's talking about. I wasn't a fan of that stuff, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> It, uh, as, as you know, artists and art directors in particular, you, you want that purity of experience, but you, you also want a purity of visual, right? And, and to a lot of us, the, the glowy bits break that. It's a gameism that kind of breaks some of that stuff. Um, but the technology is further along now, and I think there's a way to make glowy bits look really good and really sci-fi. Um, on some of the characters, so so we'll see. I mean, it's, we're going to play around with stuff and see. I just didn't like the bloomy, crazy stuff, you know. But if we can yeah. do it in a, in a Tron, tasteful type of way, um, I think that that works, right? Yeah, There's we also had a problem with that. And again, going back to YouTube 2003, it was glowy lights on the shoulders and nowhere else, and yeah. that was distracting and weird. So we got rid of them for 2004, right. and then we introduced rim shaders, and so. We've messed with a lot of different ideas, yep. and uh, one of the things that we were just, I don't know if Matt finished it or not, but we were just getting into the game uh, recently was we were going to experiment with the ability to let players choose their own color. So it didn't have to be red, didn't have to be blue, they could do whatever they wanted. Um, and so that'll affect the way that materials are built and how we display that color and all these other things. So. Um, I'm sure you guys have a good challenge on your hands <laughs> uh, yes. and a way to make that look awesome. Did you skip over Sir Briz, his, his comment? Oh, do you, do you want it? I thought it was kind of the same. It, it kind of got answered by what we showed, I think, so. Yeah. I, yeah. We answer Sir Briz's questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Briz. Uh, basically, he just wanted to see some examples of the okay. art that we were yeah, talking about. Okay, I just didn't want to overlook him. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, let's see. Next page. Next page. Raptor. Uh, Raptor wants to know if we're leaning more towards weapon models uh, from UT99, UT2004, or UT3. I would, well, I'll let Chris address I this. think for the look of the weapons, we're taking a look at what makes each weapon iconic. Uh, for example, a flat cannon. What is, the, when you think of a flat cannon, what is it? And I'm sure there's a million different views on that, but um, <laughs> we, we are kind of narrowing down those ideas. Um, What's your favorite model? 
My, my favorite model is the, is it the two, I think it's the 2004 model. It's not the 2000, the UT3 model. I think that one looks, it's just. Go ahead, say it. It's odd. It. <laughs> it's just odd looking. Um, it looks like a flower on the end or something weird. And, and I know it's supposed to be a cool mining equipment th piece mm -hmm. thing. But um, for me, weapons should be tapered. And they, they, that's your, your way to touch the world. And it brings you into the world when you're running around mm -hmm. in perspective. And that thing just kind of blossoms out like a cherry tree. And you just kind of, it's like a pom-pom that you're running around <laughs> with. And it always just kind of bothered me a little bit, the design of that one. So I wouldn't, I would kind of change that. Um, I think the UT3 uh, Enforcer needs to be a little beefier. It feels a little pew pew to me. Um, uh, well, we've had a lot of good submissions too. The Unreal uh, Enforcer seemed a lot better, a lot chunkier, yeah. and, and so yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I think we're going to, like I said, we'll look at all the iconic weapons and, and figure out what's right. But are there any, there were a few of the, the, the weapon concepts that we've seen that we've, we've kind of liked too, right? The, yeah, the, yeah. The yes, I, I just, yeah, the shock rifle was, was one of the ones that I thought was, was so pretty cool. Send more in. We'd like to yeah. see some ideas on what you guys want and what you right. guys think they should pom -pom look like. Pom-pom mod. No. <laughs> no, no pom-pom. <laughs> Okay. Pom-pom gun, it shoots pom-pom. There you go. This is, a, this is a long one. This, uh, this is from, uh, that, that was Raptor, I said that. This is from Vil Valius. This isn't quite a visual clarity question, but more art direction and design. Chris mentioned previously that he hoped to see multiple skeletons in the game eventually. Does that indicate there will be space for multiple sizes of player models as well? Or should character models be planned around the general size of the demo characters in Malcolm? No, I wanted to see skeletons hanging on the walls. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, I just meant, what I meant by that comment, I was thinking about the scar for that comment and, and having a, a character with a tail or a, uh, uh, I'm just totally drawing a blank on the other, the other bestial race there. Oh, the crawl? The crawl. Yeah, the crawl. Um, you know, having different skeletons for those type of things, or even a not like a badass nolly running around with four arms or whatever, um, they would obviously need different skeletons. And right. so that's kind of what I meant to comment. That's kind of what I was talking about. Yeah. From, um, from a design perspective, uh, at least right now, uh, we want all of our characters to be the same size, just for scale and movement and all those other things. So, you know, if you're going to make the giant character, nobody's going to play the giant right. character because right. they're going to be an easy target. Unless right. we start giving yeah. them more hit points, and then we start getting into this class-based system that's a completely different game than what we're making right now. So. Doorways need to change. I mean, there's a lot of problems yeah. with level design that comes with different scaled characters and stuff, too. So uh, the whole, it affects the whole, everything. Uh, so what about uh, one of my favorite subjects, character customization? Have we thought at all about that? Is that going to be something that we even look at? I don't know. I mean, I haven't, I, we haven't thought about it. We're just worried about getting characters in there and getting right. character models and stuff <laughs> right now. So, um, Well, somebody, I remember I somebody said that they yeah. did want to work on some type of, you know, just being able to change colors and stuff like right. that. Right, it, it would be it, fantastic to do and stuff like that. I'm not you know? sure if they, they were um, I imagine if there's, a, if there's a marketplace eventually for this, that it would be really cool to have different sets of armor and stuff for characters. Right. That would be great. And it would be great if you could blueprint them into having... And this totally affects gameplay, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> have, having armor that has special abilities, special powers, I don't know what. But well, I mean, even sky's just, the limit on that stuff. Just, if you guys, I like do the it. idea of people being able to customize with you know their own clan helmet. Their yeah. Own oh yeah. Yeah. That whatever. Too. Yep. And like you yeah. said, yeah, or, or build instead of having to worry about nice. build a whole character, I, right. I can just build boots, and then I can put those in the marketplace, and they'll become everybody's favorite boots, and I'll sell five thousand copies of them. Whatever. Right. I don't right. know. Um, but. Uh, I like the idea of it. We just got to figure out a way to work it into whatever character system we come up with. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. To tie in some other questions, can you touch on how PBR material system can be used to aid visual clarity while maintaining a detailed environment? And how clear does not specifically mean simple or plain? That's a Josh question. <laughs> yeah. A, uh, just, yeah, it just depends on how you want to build your materials, how you want things to look. Um, basically our PBR is physically based rendering, so all of our materials kind of react to light um, the way that they do in the real world. Mm -hmm. So everything has specular highlights, um, everything has a metalness and a roughness, and those are kind of combined in tandem to get the kind of look you want. So I think uh, Jordan Walker did a pretty good blog post on Unreal Engine 3. Or UnrealEngine.com about that. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, yeah, it was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so they, they should definitely go take a look. We have a bunch of documentation on all that um, to get everyone up to speed. And we're also playing around balancing normal mapped, uh, you know, high poly, low poly process and normal mapped assets versus medium poly kind of modeling. Um, this, the level I just showed has a little bit of both. And with the, the physically based materials, you can have something that doesn't have normal maps on it, that has material layers on it, that has, um, that separates out rubber, for example, and chrome, and, and more of a painted material, all on the same mesh, without a normal map, and it looks, it looks fantastic. Um, so that's another way that you can uh, kind of experiment with that stuff. And related to that, Josh, uh, how well does the material system support fallbacks for lower end? <coughs> uh, so we have a node. Uh, hold on, I wrote it down. I forgot. <laughs> it's called uh, yeah the quality switch node, um, and it basically you can switch between like DX9, uh, DX10, DX11, uh, you know, shader model three, four, and five. So if they have a low end machine, they can just add the node at the end um, of their material, and. Um, and he also he also asks uh, what's the lowest target hardware. We haven't started talking about that yet, so we're we're not yeah. quite sure. We're, yeah. we're going to try to make it run as on many machines as possible, oh, yeah. of course. Um, can character settings and design concepts be pulled from previous Unreal Universe uh, games? For example, if they wanted to bring back John Dalton from Unreal Two as a as a tournament character, or any of the characters from uh, UC Two, except Raiden. I don't know why not Raiden. And with newly built models and textures, would this be acceptable or discouraged? I would say you can do anything you want mm -hmm. um, at any point. The only stickiness comes in there is if you're going to try and sell it in the marketplace. Right, because you couldn't sell a Raiden. We can't let you sell something that's copyrighted by someone else without their permission. So, But outside of that, if you just want to do it for fun and get it in and play with your friends, go to town. Sure. Uh, are there any recurring characters that Epic wants to build in-house for sure, which the community should avoid? Another good question. We are working maybe on a character right now that... Well, I mean, I, we're, yeah, we're talking about getting... We have Malcolm who's coming in right now, and we're talking about the possibility of including Lauren just so we have a female <coughs> character as well. But, but these but, aren't new characters. But Right, yeah. and, and, and but they're not... Are, and ones. they're temporary. They're not intended right. to be permanent. Um, and where, they're just a reskin of, like, UT3 characters. Yeah. So, so basically, so. you can do whichever character you'd like yeah. to do. Yeah, right. Absolutely. I mean, and, we, and we have no... We, we lay no, no claim to, no, to nothing at this point. Right. If you want to create a new weapon or a new level or a new character... Please go for it by all means. That's exactly what we want um, and what we need. Yeah. I mean, we need. I'm, I'd love for character models. Um, yes, I would. I would know? not hate it if someone redid the the soldier models from the original right. UT. Yeah, so I could have Annika back again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, due to the lack of visual clarity in uh, UT three, the community came up with bright skins. What do you think about bright skins with their extreme <laughs> gummy bears? Yeah, yeah. See? There, you go. there you go. So, we, so we, we talked about that already. Yeah. Yes, we talked about that. Um, we would rather that you don't <coughs> have to use them. But, yeah, yeah we, we want to find a balance where everybody can play and enjoy it visually and it looks normal as opposed to bright skins. But uh, I understand why people do that, and so ideally we'll find a balance that makes everybody happy. And going back to what we talked about with um, user experience, are there any new plans for the, the different colors for the teams? Uh, like I said earlier, we just started this week messing with the ability for you to select whatever color you wanted. Um, that's going to have a lot of design fallout that we haven't dealt with yet in, yet in terms of you know, how do we adjust lighting and maps, um, how do we adjust character skins, how do we adjust flag color, um, all, these, all these things, uh, you know, HUD and everything. But um, all of that is fixable. It's just a technological challenge that we haven't gotten around to really addressing yet. And uh, what about uh, forced uh, force models? Uh, like, like in um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I want to always have the juggernaut for everybody. Yeah, so that's you know, like uh, again, it's a competitive play thing where I don't care what you what character you're using or what you're using. I want to just set it to a default so that everybody looks the same, so that I'm not distracted. Whatever, um, kind of evens the playing field and visually in a lot of ways. Um, I, it may or may not be an option. I don't know. We haven't put we haven't too far down that road yet. Okay. Uh, Jumpwire says, looking back at your title, specifically the UT and Gears of War development, it's obvious that some of the UT 2K4 style did flow into your final Gears models. Thematically, are we still going to be looking at the, the char characterized 
and bloated models specifically on the arm, or are we be looking at something more realistic? <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to aim for something more realistic this time around. I think we're going to be bring the proportions down a little bit. And yeah, uh, there's giant beefy I was proportions. Say, I, so, I look at so unrealistic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we. Uh, real to me uh, I think I think we should bring them back, and, and I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to yeah, do that with like the environments. You know, I talked about that earlier. The Tim Burton versus Chris Nolan Batman kind of mm -hmm. thing, right? Um, they were. Uh, that series got caricaturized um, as it went on, and I think we, you know, we went a little overboard sometimes with that. But um, with this UT, what I'd love to do is bring some of that stuff back. And there's been some fantastic concepts out there um, of normal proportion UT characters that look really good that yeah. I, I'm dying to build or have somebody build, you know. Luke? Yeah. Another Gears of War-based question. Um, is there any, any color themes? Or oh, We already talked about this. Um, are, there, are we going to be muting certain color palettes? Or no, I think we'll do what the level calls for, right? I mean, if we've got a space dungeon, it'll be dungeony, and you know, if we've got a high tech facility, it'll it'll look that way. You know, it's going to the color and and the palette will yeah. be dictated nice by of, the environment. It's a very yeah. nice way of asking for to saturate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. Well, I'm really yeah. looking forward to somebody doing like a hyperblast where you're flying through space and you're seeing nebula and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know planets and right, stuff like yeah. that, all the, the wonderful colors. So. I hope to see lots of colors out there. And um, Jumpwire also says uh, you're doing amazing work, and he appreciates it. Thanks. And um, will be we be, be introduced to any new species beyond those from previous games? So are there going to be any, anything more than Scar and the Nally and the Crawl? Don't know right now. Currently not in development. If you built it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just okay, saying. so Dr. Dre isn't Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre is D D R R E E. I had that wrong last week. Okay. Or I can pronounce it as snur. <laughs> <laughs> Does visual clarity mean we won't get to see bleeding age UE4 graphic tech? Bleeding edge, not bleeding age. No, I think I think we will see bleeding edge. Um, I think we're well on our way, actually. This is all you know? about bleeding yeah. edge. Yeah, I am. Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, yeah. So you talked about some of these already with the Batman stuff. Um, what, what are other inspirations that you have for visual clarity? Uh, for visual clarity, it's just you know kind of what I showed you in that in that uh, in that initial concept map. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's uh, keeping things clean at the player level and spreading spreading the the love around doorways and in targeted areas that still make it look bleeding edge and modern and and things like that but don't get in the way of player it's it's going to be a fine balance right so and th there's a lot more that goes into being bleeding edge than just the number of polygons or right. the level of detail I and mean, just the lighting model the shaders I mean, all yeah. of that stuff is yep. is super hardcore bleeding edge even in you know, Fortnite, which is very, very cartoony, but if you look at it from a, a bleeding edge technology perspective, a lot of that stuff is super high tech. Yep. Um, and so, whatever visual style we end up with, I have no doubt that it will end up bleeding. Off it will the, be bleeding. The, the, it will be bleeding, yes. <laughs> it will be very bloody. <laughs> Daniel's new Amy and Occlusion. I don't know if you've seen that in Fortnite or not, but it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you elaborate on where exactly does the visual clarity vision manifest? Is it post-processing, textures, lighting, all of the above? It's all of the above. Uh, the way that with the PBR stuff and, and everything, it's, it, it all works together. So you've got to massage the materials. You know, you start with a cool model and then you massage the materials into it. Then you light it and then you do some more massaging and, and it all has to work together, right? Because the, the materials play off the lighting so much and the roughness of the material and the, um, all that stuff. Do you want to talk more about that? Or, I mean, that um, kind of hits it on the head, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can point people to, uh, there's a company called Don't Nod, D-O-N-T-N-O-D, and they did a, uh, a visual breakout of how materials look at different points in UE4. Mm -hmm. So roughness, zero all the way to 10, metalness, how they kind of play together. You should so. post that on the forums. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. That'd be so pretty I'll, valuable, I think. I'll, yeah. I'll do that today because yeah. it's, it's an awesome uh, article. And let's see, I'll make Sly. Sly, remind me of all the things that we're supposed to post on the forum so we don't forget anything today. <laughs> and will we still get to see super high detailed shock beam being formed with a new UE4 attack? Yeah. yeah. I think so. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now with more shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More beam. Yeah. Um, I think we're just going to ask one more question. Sure. Um, and this is from Threadlock. I've always loved Unreal Tournament for the amazing environments and the vistas that make you stop and go, wow. 
do you think visual clarity can be combined with detailed environments in a way that pushes the graphics to next gen levels? Yeah, absolutely. I think you know one of the things you didn't see with the map that I showed off the 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 working concept, as it as it were, um, is is a cool vista, a cool background, right? Cool skybox. That's something we haven't tackled right. yet, but we're going to. And, and that's a great uh, place to add all that detail that we don't necessarily put in right, the maps. Right. Right. And it also gives the, the map a sense of place, like yeah. where am I? What am I doing? You know, that that type of thing. So yeah, it's uh, also very worth important. Mentioning, uh, uh, you mentioned this is a living model, um, but you didn't really say living concept. Or living yeah. concept. You didn't really say why. Like you were telling me about how. Right, what I'd love to do with this, yeah, what I'd love to do with this is, is so I've taken it to a certain point, and now, how, how do we make it better, right? What can I, what can Josh do with it when I hand it to him? What can uh, Rick Kohler do with it when I hand it off to him? Paul Motter, uh, some of those guys. And then, maybe, what can the community do with it when I pass it out awesome. online, right? Um, that would be a really cool thing to do as well. Uh, so take a visual prototype like this. To, to, to touch this to We're talking like? about it. You know, we'll take a visual prototype like this. Right now, none of this stuff is in UT game, right? I'm just kind of off on the side doing it because it's so messy and there's so much churn to the assets and stuff. But we're talking about getting it in there and getting it out to the community and say, hey, you know, here's our, here's our bar. Take it and, and push it. Go, go beyond. You know, make meshes for it. Make better materials. Do better atmosphere, lighting, whatever you can do. And uh, you know it's all good. It's it, at that point it's it's you know many minds coming together to make something great. I think so. Uh, okay. This is really I know, I know they're going to ask. It's really just it. just a starting okay. point. Okay. Well, it would be a couple of weeks okay. at, at the earliest. Okay. So maybe maybe three or four weeks at the earliest. So, so keep watching for it. And I yeah, do have to yeah. ask one more question. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, Tricky Vein. That was from Threadlock. Tricky Vein uh, would like to know that he said he's heard the term Unreal DNA thrown around a few times by Perna. And while I, ge I generally think I know what it means, I wonder if he could uh, be defined or pinned down to say a little bit more succinctly uh, to a particular group of styles or aesthetic from any of the Unreal games. When you say Unreal DNA, which, what are you thinking when you say Unreal DNA? I don't know. It's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a certain color and a certain quirkiness to a lot of the Unreal stuff. Um, I can't. I can't really quantify it in, in a word or in a phrase. And it means something else to everybody. Right, so. and, and, and it, there's so many varied environments and stuff, but they all have this overall um, kind of uh, charm to everything uh, that when you see an Unreal screenshot, you kind of know that that's from Unreal. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like this new game, when you see a screenshot from this game, to be our new Unreal, right? And, and that, yeah. that is what it is. And when I, when I talk about some of the original DNA, I talk about, hey, let's not take the shock rifle and make it a crazy whip or, or something. You know, let's not kill all the original work that's, that was done. Let's build on top of that and enhance it and bring it to life in, in, a, in a modern way that, that um, our new technology allows, you know. If we could have had this technology back in, in Unreal 1 days, what would we have done with it, right? You know, right. That, that type that's of thing. That's a really good way to think about it. I mean, yeah, yeah. That way. yeah. So. so we have one other person here in the wings. Do you want to come say hello? No. <laughs> <laughs> come on. He's, 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 he's not allowed to intrude. We have our, the community manager from Fortnite standing in the wings. So everybody say hello to KL, KL Smith. And, and we, hi KL, <laughs> we'll be next, uh, back next week. We hope maybe we'll have Pete on or uh, we're actually not sure what we're going to talk about. Um, one thing I really want to, I'm really excited about, we're all excited about, is we are going to have another YouTube video. Uh, we'll be posting it tomorrow. Jason Beasley took some sh sh shots on yeah, last, awesome. film last yeah. week. Yeah. Film. Uh, last week of us playing. And it will be up either tomorrow or Friday, not sure exactly when, but we'll be sure to let you know when it's out there. So look forward to that. Uh, we'll be, the podcast, the YouTube of this video will be up tomorrow. And make sure you stop uh, by the engine stream tomorrow because they're going to be going over more 4.3 stuff. There's lots of cool stuff. And that's um, twitch.tv slash Unreal Engine. And I think that's it for us. Anybody else have anything? Nope, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody behind the scenes, including Shelly back there and Joe Wilson. And we'll see you guys soon. Thank you.